Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought we would take a look at doing another cool composite inside of Media Composer and Symphony and as you can see in front of you, I've created a very cool animation with the fire coming in to reveal this text. But what actually makes this effect even cooler is the fact that you can take this text element and key it over top of anything and the only thing that you're going to see is what the fire is actually revealing. Any other part of the text when it appears and disappears will appear and disappear over top of anything that you put it over top of. Okay, very cool effect and very easy to create inside a Media Composer and Symphony. Okay, short introduction. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Symphony, obviously Command Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. Now the very first thing that I'm gonna need is an element. So I happen to have an element here from Rampant Design Tools and what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna control an O on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. Actually, I have it inside of my stock footage folder here. So let me just come back down here to stock footage. And there it is, fire, there we go, perfect. And here it is, Rampant's 3K fire, very nice. And like I said, we want to have this reveal some text. So of course, we're going to need some text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to Clip. I'm going to come down to New Title. And I'm just going to select the Standard Title tool. And let's just type in, of course, appropriately enough, Text Rocks. Why not? And I'm going to put four exclamation marks. Because you know what? Putting five exclamation marks is a little too much. And putting three really just isn't quite enough. So I think four is going to work perfectly. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cho choose my Terminator font. There we go. Very cool. And I'm just going to stretch this out, sort of the width of the screen. I think I'm just going to go from picture safe to picture safe. And let's just bump the size of this up a bit here. We'll make it 64. Perfect. That actually worked out quite nicely. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the title tool. I'll save this back to my bin here. Now, do I have a bin open? Of course I don't. So I am just going to, can I create a new bin? No, I'll just save it into that fire bin for right now. And what I'll do is just open my graphics folder here. We'll just delete whatever this title happens to be. Probably from an old tutorial, don't even need it. And I'm just gonna stick that title in there, perfect. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna need to do, and you'll see by this element, you'll see by the icon that it's just a clip. I don't have any alpha information with this fire. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to create a mat key from it. Now here's what most people do. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to mark the entire clip. I'm going to drop it into my timeline by hitting B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm going to choose the graphics folder and uh, you know what? Actually, I need a the sequences folder. So let's actually just open our sequences bin here. We don't need this old sequence. We'll say see you later. And again, T on the keyboard, B to drop it in into sequences. There we go. Very nice. So like I said, what most people do in this situation, I'm just going to hit control and eight on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac, I'm going to come back to the key section here, is they'll choose Luma key. They'll take Luma key, they'll drag it down and they'll drop it, and you'll see that immediately what happens, and what I think I need here is just a clip of white, so that we can see exactly what's going on with this key here. There we go, very nice, just call this appropriately enough, white. Let's actually have it looking a bit nicer here, there we go, white, we'll put it into graphics, say save. I'm going to hit Control and Y on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, or pardon me, Command and Y for all my Mac friends out there. And we're just going to take this clip here and stick it on Layer 2 because I want to stick this just white background just below it. There we go. And you'll see that Chroma Key doesn't really do what I want it to do. Now, obviously, we can come in, we can adjust the key. And we can, you know, get in, start softening it out. You know, that that's kind of okay. But there's really a much better way to create a matte key for an element, like something like what we have right here. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is hit F5 on the keyboard. That's my shortcut for remove effect. If you don't have it mapped, you can always find it right there at the top of your timeline. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a matte where there isn't one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac to bring back up the effects palette. What we're going to do is navigate right back up here. We actually want to go to Image. It's actually right above key, right there. And we're going to take our color correction effect. I'm going to drag and drop it right down onto our shot here. 
And I'm going to step into effects mode by pressing Shift and Y on the keyboard. Now, I know you know it. Sing along if you do. If you don't have effects mode mapped onto your keyboard, you can always find it right here at the bottom of your composer window, right over here at the top of your timeline. Now, the first thing I'm going to do to start creating a mat out of this is I'm just simply going to take the saturation and we're just going to get rid of it to make this a black and white element. Now, you see where I'm going with this. It still really isn't quite where it needs to be for uh, a proper key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my gain, my gamma, and my setup, or my highlights, my midtones, and my shadows. I'm going to take the gain, and we're just going to crank it up a little bit here. There we go. Very nice. And I'm going to take the gamma and bring that up just a little bit, just like that. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to step out of effects mode. I'm going to hit Control and Y on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. Again, I just did that again. It's Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y for all you Mac users out there. I don't want to get that wrong for all my Mac friends out there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this clip and we're going to duplicate it. So I'm going to copy it to the clipboard right up here in my preview window and I'm going to drop it right down here in my timeline just like such. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to step down a layer. You'll see I'm looking at the topmost layer now. I just want to view the second layer here. And I'm going to remove this effect by hitting F5 on the keyboard, which is my shortcut again for removing an effect. You'll see what we have now is the black and white version, or pardon me, the color version of the element. And right above it, we have the black and white, what will be the matte. Very cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back up to the effects palette. We're going to come down to the key section. I'm going to come up and I'm simply going to choose Mac key. I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac. We're going to take that Mac key. I'm going to drag it right down here and I'm going to drop it onto the topmost layer. And you'll see as soon as I do, we now have our fire effect, but something is not quite right. Because this should actually be a key. I should see this over top of the white background, but for some reason, I don't. This fire doesn't exactly look very good either. It's really washed out. So what exactly is going on here? Well, what's important to keep in mind is that even though I have this matte set up correctly, I'll just step into it for a second. You'll see right here, there we go. I have the black background and the white is what is going to be keyed out. MIDI Composer and Symphony actually work in reverse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back out of the effect. I'm going to come into effects mode, shift and Y on my keyboard. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to say, well, show me the alpha. So you can see the alpha is correct. The effect is seeing the alpha correctly. But like I said, because everything is reversed inside of Media Composer and Symphony, what I want to do in this case is I simply want to invert the key. Now we have that fire keyed very nicely over top of the background. And the cool thing is that if I wanted to get in and, you know, finesse the mat a little bit, all I have to do is simply come back into effects mode here on my color correction and I can just adjust it like such, like such, like such. You see, very easy to get in and adjust this now. Very nice. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to now have this reveal the text on the screen. Okay, so how are we going to go about doing that? Well, you'll remember the way that this works with the Mac key, and what I'm going to do is just recollapse everything back down. The way that this works with the Mac key is this is our Mac key layer, and what it's doing is it's looking at the layer directly below it. It's basically cutting out what it sees directly below it. So what we're going to do is instead of having that fire element there, what we're going to do is just close that up. I'm going to come back to my first title, which is, of course, Text Rocks. We're going to take Text Rocks, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to drop it down on this layer right here. So take a look at what we have now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this white background because our text is, of course, white. And I'm just going to play this and take a look at that. Very cool. Now what I'm going to do here, just to make sure that you all see what's going on here, is I'm just going to create a different background color here. I'm just going to pick like sort of a, I don't know, sort of an aqua blue. Would that be aqua blue? I think it is. What I'm going to do is just close this. Maybe it's turquoise. Never get the colors quite right here. I'm going to drop that into the bottommost layer, and there you go. There's a better visual representation of exactly what is going on. This text is actually keyable over top of this background. Okay, now this, of course, begs the next question, which is how do we create that look that we created in the introduction? Well, it's actually very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to take this matte key here. I'm going to select the entire clip. We're going to copy it into the clipboard. You'll see I have it right over here. Well, actually, you can't see it because it's obviously a matte key. It's black 
right here. What we're going to do is we're going to step down to the next layer, which is the text layer, the text rocks layers. What we're going to do is we're going to step into that layer, and I'm going to select the fill layer like such. We're just going to make sure we have the entire clip selected. I'm going to hit B in the keyboard to edit that in. And what I'm going to do now is I don't want blue fire, which is showing us what the background looks like. I want to come in and add the fire in there, just like such. Now what I'm also going to do before I step out here is I'm just simply going to hit Shift and Y on the keyboard. That's just my shortcut for effects mode. Again, effects mode right over here, effects mode right over here. We're just going to turn off invert key. and I'm going to step out of the effect and take a look at what I have now. I now have that look that we had in the introduction which is the fire coming in and revealing the text sitting inside it. Then of course what I can do, is I'm just going to come back here for a second, is I'm going to take my Mac key, I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit, maybe we'll make this, oh I don't know, 75%, and we're going to take it and we're going to put it right on the edge of title safe here, right down here like such. Now obviously I would have slid that title over just so that it sat within title safe, but you get the idea of how this is going to work and take a look at this, we now have our lower third reveal of text rocks as a completely keyable element inside of Media Composer and Symphony. So I hope you see that getting in and creating these very cool elements using mats and even getting in and creating your own mats inside of Media Composer and Symphony is something that's very quick and very easy to do. So now that I've shown you this cool technique, what I want you to do is show it to your clients so you can wow and amaze them in every edit session. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.